people welcome to my channel thanks so much for always watching me thanks for being part of this channel okay god bless you if you are watching me and you have not yet subscribed please consider subscribing okay do what well to share this video also you might touch a heart out there by just sharing this video i'm here to discuss with you lesson 11 and it is titled jesus author and perfecter of our faith jesus author and perfecter of our faith and the whole week the lesson is based on hebrews 12 verse 2 i read looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of god amen and so because of the cross christ did not mind whether he would be shamed or you will be treated badly. He decided to take the cross for you and I. And so the whole of this week, we are going to study to know how some people, because of faith in Christ, or because they look forward for the coming of Christ, they have to endure certain things, they have to let go of certain things and please God in all things. And how these examples are going to benefit us or are going to help us also in our Christian journey. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity to study your word. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead, guide us, and give us a needed understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. The introduction says that Hebrews 11 and 12 are probably the most loved chapters of the book. They describe the Christian life as a race in which we all participate and in which all who stay faithful will receive the reward. They also describe the drama of redemption as a race in which people of faith from the past persevered despite sufferings, but have not yet received the reward. This lesson will explore what faith is and how it is obtained through the examples of the past and especially and centrally through the example of Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith. Amen. We move straight to Sunday and it says, The righteous will live by faith. The righteous will live by faith. And the lesson is based on Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 39. We are going to read a few of the verses there. Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 39 says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. And so the one who is yet to come will still come. And we are not supposed to, to draw back. We need to endure and keep on waiting for him because he will definitely come. Endurance is a characteristic of God's end time people, without which they will not be able to receive the promises. In order to endure, However, believers need to hold fast their faith. Amen. And so the righteous will live by faith. Meaning, you and I need to have faith in Christ to be able to endure. Because endurance, whether you like it or not, it is part of this Christian journey. You can never go to heaven if you are not part of those who endured. So anyone who will wake up on the resurrection morning and welcome Jesus Christ and be taken to heaven once endured okay and we can only endure if we have faith in jesus christ and the lesson is also pointing to us that god promised of christ coming to die he fulfilled that promise and christ came and died on our behalf and so he would definitely come the second time if he had made the promise he says that the message refers to jesus he is the righteous one the embodiment of faith who pleases God and provides life? Why then would he delay? He won't. He already has come to die for us. And he will surely come again at the appointed time. Amen. So God has always been keeping his promise. He has always been faithful to us. And so we are also called to, to be faithful to him. God's message continues. My righteous one shall live by faith. What Paul means is that God's faithfulness to his promises 
counts first and its faithfulness produces as its result our faith and all faithfulness as because god remains faithful to his promise the righteous in response to god's faithfulness will remain faithful as well amen monday says by faith abraham by faith abraham do, do, do. <laughs> yes it has some dot there so meaning it's not just abraham but some people also and the lesson is based on hebrews 11 verses 1 to 19. now this is what we are going to do we are not going to read everything we are going to read the parts or the portions where it says by faith this person did this and by faith this person did this and by faith this person refused to do that we are going to read just a portion of each of those verses and so we'll start from the verse 4 of hebrews 11 it says by faith abel offered to god a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And so by faith, Abraham chose to, to sacrifice a more excellent according to the principles God gave them than what Cain did. Verse 5 says, By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And so by faith, Enoch did not see death because he lived for God. Verse 7 says that by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Amen. And so Noah too, by faith, even though it had not rained for years in his life, but when God said it will rain, make an ark, by faith he responded and made that ark. Verse 8 also says that by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And so by faith, when God told Abraham to leave his father's house, he did not say, nah, I have everything here. I'm going to stay. He decided to, to move from his comfort zone. And then he decided to move from his comfort zone because he believed in Christ. Verse 11 also says that by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised amen and so when we come back to the verse 6 it says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him amen and so without faith you and i cannot please god abraham is probably the most important character in this chapter abraham's last act of faith is especially instructive regarding the true nature of faith and so abraham was also instructed to offer isaac ah how will god ask me to go and offer isaac when he has asked hagar and his child ishmael to leave and that God is going to fulfill his promise through Isaac. And on the person you said you are going to fulfill your promise through, that through him, I'll have many children like, like the stars in the sky. Now God is saying, go and sacrifice him. Who? You and I. Will you do it? Abraham, by faith, did not question God. He did not say anything. He decided to, to obey because he trusted that. God who gave him that child can still resurrect him when he had not even witnessed resurrection in his life. Now, when you read the whole chapter of Hebrews 11, it says that God brought Isaac out of a dead man and a barren woman. And so Abraham was dead. He was not able to impregnate a woman, but God was able to give him that strength. To be able to impregnate a barren Sarah and they were able to give birth to Isaac. But getting pregnant is not as difficult as carrying the pregnancy. So imagine Sarah of that age carrying a pregnancy to nine months. It wasn't an easy thing. And so they trusted that, yes, if God could bring human being from a dead man and a barren woman, then he's capable of resurrecting this person if he says i should sacrifice him in god's leading in the past abraham saw an intimation of what he could do in the future amen and so abraham believed god tuesday talks about moses believing in the unseen moses believing in the unseen and it's based on hebrews 11 verse 20 to 28 we are going to read few of those verses we are going to read from verse 23. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, 
was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command by faith moses when he became of age refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin esteeming the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures in egypt for he looked to the reward by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible by faith he kept the passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them amen and so moses by faith said i don't want to be called the child or pharaoh's daughter i want to be seen among god's people i am ready to let go of the kingdom the riches the gold the everything the power the rulership that is going to be bestowed on me i'm ready to let go of all that and submit to God and suffer with his people. I'm ready to lead people who are seen as refugees. It is better than being in their palace. And so Moses was also moved by faith to take such great decision. The greatness of Moses was that he was able to see beyond the promises of the king of Egypt and look toward the unseen, namely the promises of God. Hebrews says the key was that Moses' sight was fixed on the reward, not on the riches of Egypt. This reward is the same reward mentioned in Hebrews 10, 35 which God has promised to all who believe in him. Amen. And so Moses had his eyes fixed on the reward that he is going to receive from God and not earthly things. Paul's words about Moses' decision must have echoed powerfully in the heart of his original readers. They had been enduring reproaches and insults because of their faith in Christ. They also had been afflicted and lost their possessions. Some were in prison. In parallel sense, Moses chose to be mistreated with God's people, exchanging the wealth of Egypt for bearing the insults associated with Christ because he believed that the reward of Christ was greater than whatever Egypt could offer. Amen. And so in the time of um, Paul, the Hebrews, they were also facing affliction, losing properties and all that. So Paul telling them the faith of Moses also encourage them to know that yes moses also had to let go of the riches of the world and focus on the reward and suffer with god's people and so whatever they are going through they should not give up because there is a greater reward awaiting them when is this says that by faith rahab and the rest by faith rahab and the rest and so rahab a prostitute a gentile was also mentioned in the bible being noticed as one of the people who had faith in god wow wow it tells us that no matter our past no matter the situation we find ourselves in if we choose to make a decision for god and have faith in him god is ever ready to receive us and make us one of his people just as he did in the life of rahab it is based on hebrews 11 verse 31 and joshua 2 verse 9 to 11 and when we read joshua 2 verse 9 to 11 we see the story there when the spies went to the land to spy the land rahab was able to hide them from being seen or being destroyed and he was able to tell them that we have heard of the story of what god has done on your behalf how he departed the red sea how he fought your enemies and we have heard all that we were afraid of god and so we know the land is for you god has given the land to you people rahab had faith in god we are going to read hebrews 11 verse 31 said by faith the harlot rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spices with peace i mean rahab is probably the most unexpected character whom we find in Hebrews 11. Rahab is one of two women mentioned by name. She is a tenth in the list, the first being for the first being forefathers and patriarchs of Israel, and each one is regarded as being righteous. When we come to her, 
we find that she not only is a woman but also a gentle prostitute you know women in the bible time they are not recognized before a woman's name will be mentioned it means she has done something remarkable and so rahab being a woman and also a gentle prostitute there's something remarkable and so her name was recognized in the bible not just anywhere but as part of those who had faith in christ rahab's deed of faith was that she had believed and obeyed even though she did not see she did not see the plots of egypt or the deliverance in the red sea or the water flow from the rock or the bread descend from heaven yet she believed she was a good example for the audience of hebrew who did not hear jesus preach or see him or see him do a miracle and for us as well who did not see any of these things either amen and so you and i we haven't seen christ we haven't um, seen any of the miracles that the bible talked about but we believe it, it is the same way those hebrews the gentiles and those people they did not see but they believed and so faith is not just about seeing and before you believe but also hearing the word of god we come to believe and have faith in God. Paul then continues with a list of hardships, many faiths. The phrase refusing to accept release implies that they had implies that they had the possibility to escape, but chose not to because their sights were set on the reward of God. Amen. And so these people, their sights, everything, their heart was set on the final reward and not the sufferings that they were going through so it says it's so the lesson is encouraging us also to set our hearts our eyes and everything on the final reward jesus the altar and perfecter of our faith there's them jesus the altar and perfecter of our faith hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3 we are going to read hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3 therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sun which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the altar and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Amen. Christ also had the chance to say, No, I am not going to go to the cross. I am not going to subject myself to all the pains and the affliction. But he hey, because of love for us, because he's ready to be faithful in his promise by keeping his promise to us he decided to let go of his glory and come and die for us and so paul is calling you and i if christ could lay everything aside then you all you and i also should be ready and learn to lay everything that is weighing us down and look up to jesus and jesus alone jesus is the founder or author or pioneer of our faith in at least three senses first he is the only one who has finished the race in its fullest sense so christ is the only one who has finished the race and has received the reward by being at the right hand side of his father all the others abraham and the rest yes they went through it they were looking forward for the reward but they are also in the grave waiting for the reward but christ received the reward for all of us all Second, it was actually Jesus' perfect life that has made it possible for these others to run their race. If Jesus had not come, the race of everyone else would have been futile. And so Abraham, Moses, and all these people, their race, they were able to run the race because of Jesus. Because Jesus had already run the race for them. And so Jesus, and so Jesus coming to die for us and being in heaven covers all those people also. And finally, Jesus is the reason we have faith. As one with God, he expressed the faithfulness of God towards us. Amen. Our faith is only a response to his faithfulness. Amen. So we are not being called to have faith in something we don't know. 
we have not been called to obey someone who has not done anything for us, who has not proved himself or proved his love for us. That is why he says that love God because he first loved us. And so we are faithful to God because he first was faithful to us. He kept his promise to us. In the end, Jesus is the perfecter of faith because he perfectly exemplifies how the race of faith is run. How did he run? He laid aside every weight by giving up everything for us. Amen. Now it is our turn to run. Though we can never achieve what Jesus did in our own strength, we have we have his perfect example before us. And so by faith in him and keeping our eyes on him, we press on ahead in faith, trusting in his promise of a great reward. Amen. We will conclude the lesson with a quote from Sister White, Steps to Christ, page 17, in the Friday lesson, which says, By faith you become Christ's, and by faith you are to grow up in him. By giving and taking, you are to give all, your heart, your will, your service. Give yourself to him to obey all his requirements, and you must take all, Christ, the fullness of all blessing, to abide in your heart, to be your strength, your righteousness, your everlasting helper, to give you power to obey. Amen. And so we have to do all that by faith. If you don't have faith in Christ, what he has done on our behalf and what he's doing in heaven on our behalf, we cannot please him, not at all. It is faith and faith alone. Thanks so much for being part of today's summary. If you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Like, share this video also for me. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.